a particular word in the scripture, Matthew was uh, Matthew chapter 2. You can get Matthew chapter 2, let me. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem and, uh, and Judah during this time, the king of Karen and Madi from the east came to Jerusalem, Karen. And asked, where is the one who has been born in king of the Jews, the star star, and we have come to worship him. Can you come down to the cross, please? I can save some time. When King Herod had this, bring it down, please. Hallelujah. Bring it down. Bring it down, please. Further, further down. Further down. Further down. Next words. Next word. Next word. Next word. Yeah, okay. Stay there, please. Yeah, next word, please. Just go next word. I want to save the time. Okay. Okay, three. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea. Next word, please. And saying, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Next word. This is, this is he who was spoken through the prophet Isaiah, a voice calling him to the step to pass the way for the Lord, making straight path for him. John's clothes were made of camel hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His foot was locust and wild honey. People went down to him, uh, to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sikhs, this is what went happening. This is the word I want to pick up and help you with. Uh, with limited time, so I'm just coming to this word. One he saw. Paul, can you read that for me? It's okay, you can read that. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Carry on. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise your children for Abraham. The axe is already at the roots of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit but we put down and thrown into the fire. Thank you. Stay there, please. Just stay there. The axe is already at the root of the tree, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Now, <clears throat> we come through the verses, so you can see that Jesus' birth and now now, ministry of Jesus has not started. Jesus is a baby, and now John the Baptist is the forerunner. He is preparing the way for the return of the king. And what is happening here? And suddenly, <clears throat> one he saw the Sadducees and Pharisees coming. Jesus, this answer, go back to the verse seven and six, seven and eight and nine. He saw the people, Sadducees and Pharisees, coming to listen to. Listen to John the Baptist, and suddenly he throw verse nine. Throw the verse nine is just to go back. Please, we'll come back to this one. I want to put it in the context. Verse nine. And do not think you can say to yourself, "We have Abraham as our father." I tell you, out of the stones can God can raise the children of Abraham. He seeing the Sadducees and Pharisees. If you go to seven and eight, it will explain to you when Jesus saw Sadducees and Pharisees, he changed the message to them. And that's what the verse 10 comes to. In what he says is, but when he saw many of these Pharisees and Sadducees are coming to see Jesus, 
who, you know, to where he was, to, sorry, to John the Baptist, where he was baptizing, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who want you to flee from the coming wrath? Okay? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Now, now going to the next one, please. Let me go back. And do not think you can say anything to yourself. We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of the stones, God can raise the children of Abraham. Hallelujah. Those who worship the demon, who was, you know, lots of people, heathens, all found Jesus as the Lord and Savior. I won't be standing here in front of you. My forefathers were worshipping stones. And think that that was the God of goddesses. Actually, Manisha will tell the same thing. So what happened? God has literally created his children out of the stones. We thought some stone is the God of goddesses. My uh, Dr. Kanapan is at the back of no, Daniel. And he's there. His forefathers would have been through the same thing. Today, they become Abraham children. Shall we give a clap to the King of Kings? <laughs> God has created, see speaking, out of the stones, God can create the children of Abraham. Hallelujah. What a wonderful thing. God, Abraham said, uh, John the Baptist is preaching, do you think you are greater? God can create out of the stone children for Abraham. Today, I'm just to connect you with Abraham through the grace and mercies of Jesus Christ. That's what preparing the way for Jesus' return, Jesus coming back. Sorry, Jesus first coming as a child into the ministry and he's preaching. Verse 10 minutes. Now let me go back to the point. The axe is already at the root of the tree and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Now, I have to take you stay here, but time is limited. So, Acts you know, in the same chapter, John the, John, the book of John, at chapter 15, Jesus was preaching, yet it branches that cut off fruit will be cut off, will not bear fruit, will be. That is talking about pruning. Jesus is talking about pruning. Okay? I, I love gardening, I love fruit trees, but if you don't prune properly, you won't get the right fruit. Pruning is very important for the duty of a good gardener. In the right time you prune, if not in the wrong time, if you cut the tree in the wrong time, the tree will die. In every season, there is something how to prune a rose. In the time to produce the best, best flowering season to have. The same thing every tree, one to grow. One tree is different from sometimes from other tree. You have to prune at the right season. Some trees, some things you have to prune in the, in the previous uh, autumn, late autumn, and some you have to prune in the beginning of the spring. So, various pruning. Jesus talked about any branches that doesn't bear fruit will be cut off. He's not, not talking about the root. He is talking about the branches. The branches. You know, sometimes I preach to people, you know, I was talking about, you know, how do you walk in the Lord, in the holiness and righteousness, loving the Lord and following. There are branches there in the world. In Christian's life, there are branches. God loves us, so he prunes it and they cuts off. My friend, don't do that. That's not going to fruitful. If you keep on doing this one, this is going to destroy your body. It's not going to bear fruit. Cut it off. And Jesus is the good God man. He tried to. Now, this is a different story. When you come to, we harden our heart. What happens? The axis at the root. Hallelujah. Axis at the root. Now, I just wanted to explain to you without complicating so much with various passages to you today. Jesus, in his church, he tried to prove. That doesn't, your testimony doesn't pro produce any fruit. Don't tell me to be You know, don't try to advise others. Don't try to do this one. Because what you're doing is some branches in your life that is no fruit. You know, I was just looking in the spring. I go to my trees, I plant them, I look around. There are so many branches, but only one branch that is a, that is a, that is a flower step. You know, that's going to bring fruit. But how about the other branches? You know, I planted a nice, wonderful friendship. French plum. I love plums so we plant different different varieties of plum. plums and I look at only one branch is the one which has got the flowers. That's the only one which is going to produce. So I'm going to cut out some branches when it is the right time. In such a way the goodness go to the right branch. The wrong branch is that and I can trim that so all the energy go into the one with the flower. That's what comes from it. Sometimes you have to do those things. 
in such a way and it is not set up for pushing the many others out of the kingdom. The, 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 the food value of our life is very important. God is, is not Pastor Sam walking in the church. You may think there is a gardener, a great gardener is walking. And he is the Lord God of Mighty. Any branches that doesn't bear fruit, doesn't bear a testimony to God, doesn't live a life that is holy, God will cut it off. I have seen this one, God cutting. It's very frightening. Sometimes you think what is happening, is it something, you know, God walk around, walk around the place and begin to cut off branches that doesn't bear fruit. See, the, the danger is, people think, understand, don't understand this one. That branch is in the tree. The same tree you wanted is in the same tree. Body of Christ is the same thing. It is in the same, in the same body of Christ it is, it is there, but there is no fruit. There is, no, there is no fruit of obedience. There is no fruit of honor to the living God. They live in some sort of a deception. And now what is happening? To protect others, God comes up with the secretaries. You know, often people go, rebellion and so many things come into people's life, not obedience. Obedience is very, very precious for them. Pastor Sam says something, this is good for me, let me do it. Because one the season, everything is right, I will do it. That season never came into the person's life. This is a frightening thing for me to say to people. That moment never came. If you know the season, we allow, let him be the God man. Jesus said, remain in me, and I will remain in you. So how can you remain in him when we disobedient to God's word? When we obey him, and we are able to remain in him, he remains in us. The devil is the greatest to confuse him. See, the devil, Satan cannot create, he's not the creator, and he will never tell a lie, he will never tell the truth. So he mix up the truth and the lies and give to us. He gives a cocktail to people, mix up the truth and the lie, and he gives us. If you go to a party or a wedding, they give you a cocktail, fruit cocktail. When you drink that money, you know that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that one. If you are can do correctly, that is okay for me. What I tell you, the devil always give me some cocktail and you keep people keep on drinking it. He mix up the truth and the lie and give it to you. That's why you will never be able to find what is truth. But God's word is powerful, he set us free. He, the devil's pattern is he wants us to live because he cannot create anything. He cannot restore you completely. But he gives some deception to you, so you believe that is true. It's all right, he loves me, and so I walk in the place to find that there is no fruit in your life, there is no testimony in your life. But absolutely, suddenly, the God that is coming closer and closer with the secretary in his hands, I tell you, I tell Silla, Silla, just hang on to his hospital and places. I said, step back, step back, step back. You know why? There's a God that coming with the secretary. If you go there, there's a secretary. Sometimes, you know, people handle knives, they're not careful by accident, they will hit. You don't go there to the place because the God that is coming with the secretary. Hallelujah. Now I'm taking you to something else. It's good for you because what happened? For the body of Christ, for the tree, main tree, it is good. You will be like an olive tree planted in the house of God. Hallelujah. Shall we all shout? I am I'm like an olive tree planted in the house of God. And he's planted in the house of God. What will the sickness come? It's got no hold over you. Because I'm representing the God man on this earth. I come to you and say, God spare this tree. God spare this tree, God. What he does is he put the secretary to one side because the person is listening to you. He just opened up a potassium or he opened up a calcium. He sees the appropriate bag of manure or a good fertilizer. He pour it on the thing. On the root of the tree. What happened? Suddenly, all the sickness had gone because he poured down that fertilizer on the bottom of the root. Hallelujah. Because the obedience take the thing, he put the secretaries to one side, he opened up a bag of fertilizer. Because you know why? Jesus is pleading, keep it one more time. One more time, he's our advocate. God, Jesus is pleading, God, do not cut the tree. 
Do not cut the tree. Let us wait for one more year. And then he, grew, he just put the fertilizer in time. He traces the bring forth fruit for the glory of the living God. Hallelujah. This is called intercession. No matter what the devil said, whatever it is, God turned around every sickness, everything. Because he's the creator, he turned, he turned every, every struggle you are facing, he can turn around. When we don't know he is our partner, he is our good shepherd. When we don't know, you don't know the shepherd who is ministering to you either. When you don't know the Lord God is my shepherd, when we read Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. When we understand that shepherd, you will understand the shepherd God has given you. Otherwise, who's Sam? Sam, Sam, I am a shepherd. I got no doubt about it. No matter what you are, you are going through the struggle of alcohol, you are going through the deathbed, I will come there and try to help you because of my God, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. That's what I found out first. Hallelujah. I. I don't talk like fools, spiritual fools, I tell you. Because that's what they, he is, Sadducees and Pharisees, religious scholars. In Israel, there are religious scholars coming to John the Baptist. What is he? The axe is already at the root of the tree, and every tree that does not produce fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Now, it's not pruning time, this is the axe time. A yeah, season changes pruning to axe. Pruning is only cutting few branches. Take away the branches away from you. Whatever the branch is, God takes the branch away in such a way. You are blessed. You may be thinking sometimes, why the branch is gone? God won't revitalize you and your life. That we can be a blessing to you and the blessing to the kingdom of God. Now it is the axe time. At the root. Now I tell you, what is this root? Now I need to take you back a bit there. I hope I will be able to finish on time and I should be able to minister to people if need be. Hallelujah. If the Holy Spirit leads us. See, your root, the important root, the problem producing root is pride. What is this root, spiritual root? What is the root of our life? Why God is saying here through, through John the Baptist, the axis at the root. Because the root is the reason for all the other sin that manifested. Disobedience, that goes to the root. The root is the pride. Pride is the biggest root for people. People can't stand in obedience. They don't believe in the great shepherd. They don't believe in the small shepherd. It's only a sound. A sound, a sound. I'm afraid I'm not really interested in a title. What you are drawing in. I help people to draw into the office of the great shepherd through the earthly, a shepherd who brings to you. They don't understand. Because pride is the reason for all the other problems they are facing. Now, branches are not bearing fruits and walking in obedience. Now, what is happening? They live in some sort of a pride, spiritual euphoria. <laughs> but what? Sadducees and Pharisees are not ordinary people. If you know Jewish history, the very top people, they were the people, lawmakers, whatever they And they come to Jesus. They come to Jesus later on. They come to, come to John the Baptist. But John the Baptist turned to us and the, the axe is already at the root of the trees. Every tree that does not bear good fruits, could not produce good fruit, will be cut up. The, the tree can produce good fruit and also sour fruit. Hallelujah. And so, some trees are not good. And will be thrown, cut off, cut down, and thrown into the fire. Now, these scholars come to Jesus. Who said you to? Who told you to come here? Who frightened you to come here? That is already at the root. Already means even before you come, the axe is at the root. Repenting message is preaching. Axe is at the root. The root is pride. Sadducees and Pharisees, they thought much better than this man eating the wild honey 
and he's eating all these creepy crawlies. And he has got a clothes here, just a belt around his waist. He's not a desirable person because some more desir undesirable person is going to come, that is Jesus. And he's more undesirable because he's catching all these animals and eating them. And uh, you know, if you are thinking, oh my goodness, man, it is not really a good thing. He's eating all these things and he's eating only wild honey. He was, maybe he was eating kutu or kani or hatu or kani or whatever that's like that. <laughs> he was eating the honey and eating this animal, but he's preaching a message. And that is the axis of the Sadducees and Pharisees are religiously very proud people. If you are religiously proud people, repent. Bring yourself. You know, when I'm helping my friend Kyle, I don't think one way God's love is there for him as much as for me. God loves him. Shall we go clap to the King of Kings? The issue is, how far you understand? Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. It's not that way, the knowledge of his love. You know, when you is singing, sometimes she just mentions certain things. The knowledge of his love. God's love, the knowledge of God's love is the first step. How much he loves me. That changes my life. He loves me. These religious scholars came to John the Baptist with all set of a pride. All religious pride. I know it better. We all know it better. What is this power to tell? And uh, because of the pride. Pride produces a twin. It's not like a plant in the house of God. It produces a tree. And the tree produces branches and flowers. And so many things it produces. The pride is the root cause of all the other sins. When Satan fell from heaven, Lucifer fell from heaven. Lucifer was a worship leader there. He didn't commit adultery in heaven. Please don't tell me, don't take it. Adultery is a serious sin before God. Because he given a list of people who are doing these things will not get into heaven, they'll go to the hell. No matter whatever the devil tells you something else, that's from the devil, is not from God. God never tells you to do what you are doing, that's not going to be helpful. God has got this, even liars, even if we are liars, Oh, that's a white lie. This is a black lie. There's no black lie and white lie. Lie is a lie. It is on the list. These are the people. Fornicators. <laughs> and liars. They shall not enter into their heavens. Hallelujah. Degree of sins are different. People think it is different. But God lists many things in the same list. These people will not enter into heaven. People may think, oh, if I'm a loving person, I go to heaven. God must not, God is not that stupid. If he loved me, obey my commandments, he said. Because God loves us, so we need to obey his commandments. That's why it works. Hallelujah. Not by our stupid, weird ideas. The root of every other sin is pride. Satan fell from heaven because the pride came. Oh, I don't, I don't, I, I can be greater than God. I can be greater than this pastor, the small shepherd in this town. I, I, he does not know. He needs the double molly academy. He not, does need some sort of a support for me. I don't need any support. The Lord God is. Uh, I look to the hill every day when I wake up in the morning. If anybody stays in my house, they know that. Every day when I wake up, I look to the hill where does all my help come from. Take the people of God, people struggling in death bed, and speak God's word. God, one more year, one more year, keep the person alive. That person be stronger. That person will be fit for heaven. My job is to make sure the person is fit for heaven. My job in the church life, in people's life, is not fit them into the church, fit them into the kingdom purpose. That's why my message is stronger. I, I got no intention of, I'm a businessman, I know how to fit people into the church but I can't fit them into the heavens. But my message is such that you will fit into the heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> church is the end time. Many people are deceived because, you know, many people want to fit people into the church. I don't. I don't. If you can't fit them into the heaven, what the business I'm doing? If a remote man taking a vehicle, if the vehicle is completely passed, it is fit to be on the road, not in his garage. 
How will we have that? That's what the fitna certificate is. It should be preparing the way for his return. As, as John the Baptist was preparing the way for Jesus coming back, coming and doing a greater record before his ministry started, here John the Baptist is preaching. Before the coming of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, my job is to preach and prepare the way along with the church, along with the believers, prepare the way for the return of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. That's the job of the church. It's not just to monitor somebody and kiss them the, all those things and finally this, that. We deceived one another completely. Hear me out clearly. Then what happened? The root? Many problems, many branches come. The root is the very important thing. The root produces bitterness. That's why the Bible says the root of bitterness, bitterness towards people that need to go. The root of bitterness. Why the axe is there? To cut off the pride. The pride. Many years ago, today the world has got serious problem. Everybody thinks of Putin as the bad fellow. Yes, he is the bad fellow. If I tell you. But the world has gone into pride, complete pride. Everywhere. Britain, America, European nations, India, more than anything else. Pride, pride, pride everywhere. Pride, fully pride. Every prime minister, every everybody that I can sort it out. They don't realize that there's the king of kings and the lord of lords above all of them. They think they knew there is somebody above him. That is not what we find today. Many years ago, you know, many, many years ago when the, when the wall came down, how many of you are in England at the time? The wall in Europe came down. Apart from English people, many of them may not be here at the time. I was here at the time. The wall, Berlin wall came down. East Germany and West Germany and completely broken. The wall came down. Soviet Union completely collapsed. I'm telling you a point about pride. What is the Western pride cost the problem? Today Putin will not be doing this thing if the Western nation walked in without, without pride. We may be pride about our democracy, we can be proud about our economy, and all those things we can be proud. Still it is pride that stings in the nostril of God. I'm speaking to the nations of this world as I speak. I'm a small boy, but I'm delivering what the Lord God is saying, the pride. Putin is in the White House now. The wall fell down, he was a young Putin. Young Putin, and he was a KGB man, that people may not have thought at the time. Three. Seriously, today he's a problem to the world. Pro Putin is a big problem to the entire world. Some people bow down to him, African nation, India, and other people somehow beyond the fence in China. But when the wall came down, and, uh, and at the time Perestroka, somebody would have known about Perestroka, and the big refinement, and two leaders, Michael Gorbachev and another guy, what's his name? Not leader. And another Russian leader, uh, Boris Yeltsin, both of them, Boris, his name was also Boris Yeltsin, and both of them joined together, stood out the tank and brought freedom to Soviet Union. Now, all this thing happening, began that, that the young fellow Putin is now rising up to power. And he was in the White House. I'm telling you an incident here completely. This is a true incident that happened. And, and they welcome Putin there. He is going to be the Prime Minister or the, or the President of Russia. They welcome him into the White House. Now, George was senior, not junior. Senior was in power. That's the father was in power as the President of America. Then the son became, which is George Bush, who taken us to the war in Iraq. And that's that time. The senior George Bush was in power. Putin is in the White House. And George Bush had got a wireless microphone, security forms. And so what happened actually, and Putin was on the other side talking to some other people, and George Bush came to talk to somebody else, he's the, at the time he's the foreign secretary or something, and he mentioned something to him. What he said was, Daniel Bush, oh, Putin is here, the president of, president of Soviet Union, he is eating out of my hand. That's exactly the word he said. But he didn't really realize that he's amplified on the other side, like this microphone. <laughs> This is exactly what happened. He said to the other person, he thought Putin is far away, but he's spoken to somebody else. He's eating out of my hand. I mean, people who know American language, American English, it's slightly different from, different from what the English speak in England. And he said, he's eating out of my hand. That's the beginning of the pride. George Bush Senior said, 
He is the Prime Minister for President of Jamaica to the White House. He is eating out of my hand means he thought he won the whole thing. Soviet Union is completely gone. And he is eating out of my hand. And that day, Putin pride went up. Here is one pride. Because I got everything in my hand, he's eating out of my hand. That means uh, you eat out of your pride, not out of the hand of somebody. No matter how much I, I love glory, and if he gives something out of his hand, I'm sure he will not give out of his hand. It may be so deep, I'm not saying anything, but I, he would not offer to me because that's not an honorable thing. What he would do, I go to his house and sit down, sit down, he bring him a clean, nice plate. We he he's not here, that's okay, but it's all right. No, is that okay? And he can be in a nice clean plate to me. I eat out of the plate, not out of your hand. Are you with me? What I'm saying? But if you had a pussy cat or a dog, you will give it in your hand. I'm explaining to you what George Bush Senior said, what happened. He said to him, he's eating out of the hand. So Putin is reduced to the level of a dog. Why a freedom loving nation? This is incident based. You go back to the thing, you might be able to research and find out. The pride is the root cause of many trouble. <coughs> the pride is the root cause people live in immorality. People live in greed. You see, often we think, what happens if we, 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 we just think money is the money is the biggest problem. We must give the money. It is a it is a nonsense, I tell you. Why? If you kill the pride, you know how to handle the money. Shall we give a clap to the King of Kings and <laughs> See, that is a kind of gospel going on. Oh, we don't need money, we don't need money, we don't need that. We just blah, 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 blah. They don't know what is the root cause. The white people said the axe is at the root of the money. He didn't say that. It's not in the world that God made Isaac prosperous and Abraham prosper. He given the whole world to the human being to rule righteously and destroy the pride. Satan didn't fall from heaven. Lucifer didn't fall from heaven because of he had agreed for money. He fell from heaven for the sake of his pride. I will raise above him. I'll put him in the place. I will raise above him. The minute the thought came, Lucifer came down from heaven with one third of the angels down to the floor. Here. If you read Ezekiel, you will know how decorated him. Lucifer was highly decorated. Highly decorated with the most expensive pearls. Pride. Is the root. Pride is the root. The branches come very beautifully. There is no fruit. Why the root? God is going to the root. Is enough is enough. It is not producing anything. Today the world has got trouble. They blame everything on Russia. Israel is that we are not getting involved. I'm not supporting Israel for that reason. I'm not telling Israel is completely right. But prophetically, they are all falling into the place correctly. And they are going in a different thing completely. No message in Israel, no preaching the gospel, and one government is trying to plant the money and anybody preaching gospel, they will be put into prison for two years. That's what they are trying to do. I checked it out. But it may not come to pass. But Bible, God's word, Yemah's word is a day coming. You will not hear God's word. A famine is coming to Israel. A famine is coming to Israel. They cannot hear the God's word. Hallelujah. God's word has been fulfilled. Now the root is the axis of the root because every other sin, the pride produces. <coughs> the pride of life. See, if you are not happy with pride, what will happen? Pride, so many pride will come. Pride of your position, pride of your qualification, pride of your money, pride of your wealth, pride of your house, pride of your car, pride of your family, pride of Yet the other branches come in. When the wealth increases, when your, when your blessing increases, what the Bible says, don't put your heart into it. This is how you add the root, God's blessing in your life. You don't put your trust on your wealth, you don't put the trust in your money, it's not you trust in the Lord. So pride will rise up. God will help you with the journey. Correct.
Wax is at the root. Wax is at the root. The, 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 the what do you call, is the root of all evil. The lust and your desire to have money is that, is that, is the root of all evil. Hallelujah. Pride is the root. Bitterness is another root. When you come, God, I want to be obedient. I want to put your put righteousness. Every branch in your life that doesn't bear fruit. God, in His love, you bring them closer to you, closer to Him, and started pruning something. But still, if you are resisting God, finally, what happened? This is what happened. The axe is at the root. The axe is at the root. If you know what our job is to root out all evil out of our life, I'm using the word just for a play, playbook scenario, you root out all the evil from your life. God, disobedient in my heart, fear in my heart, unfaithful in my heart. I am just worshipping my heart, worshipping my wealth, or worshipping my position, worshipping what I am. I am not truly worshipping you. I am setting my heart on the money. I am setting my heart on so many things. I am not setting my heart on your values, what you call God. If you root out, your root will not be cut by God. Acts has got no, no use there. Because you know why? We root out every evil out of our life. Out of our obedience, out of our pride. Pride is the main root. Why people don't obey God? Because of the pride. Because they know they are no talk. They won't listen to what Pastor Sam says. They won't listen to anyone of God says. Because pride is the root. I will know it all. If this morning you are sitting here, if you know that you know it all, my friend, my, my dear sisters, brothers, and if you are working with me, fathers, Mothers, root out every evil. Root out every evil at the bottom of the tree. The root is the bitter root, disobedient root, and the root is pride. I can't ask for heroes. I can't settle my, my dispute. I can't settle because the pride is the ruling factor. I don't listen to Pastor Sam say what he want to say, but I will do my own thing, my friend. Pride is the root. If you deal with the root, see, I often do something for my plants. I, I just put, put some sort of natural fertilizers around the tree. The season comes, it brings forth better fruit. Deal with the root. Whatever the sin you are unable to overcome, you are unable to be obedient to God, the root is pride. There's nothing else. The pride produces, I will do what I wanted to do. Obedience, sometimes you don't understand. That's what I've been told. It's good to be obedient. You know the fruit later on. You know the fruit of obedience later on. You know, I worked with God, you know, in various things, and I asked the people I trusted that their advice immediately I take it. Immediately I take it. But now, looking back many years later on, I'm glad I was obedient. I didn't understand one bit, but I was obedient. You try to understand and the obey. Never happen. Axe is on the root. Axe is on the root. Axe is on the root. We don't put God's axe on our root. God, I stand by your righteousness, your obedience. You know, people don't obey. That's what Jesus said. If you know me, obey my commandments. People can't obey God's command because they truly don't love God. And but they talk about love. Talk about love because that's what they will do. Is it not? If you hope, if you love me, but the, you put the equation, they don't love the Lord, they love something else, pride. Pride is a root cause. If you root out the evil, if you root out all these things, bitterness, covetousness, adulterous, every root has got the main, main tap. Some plant has got tap root. Some people have a very different root system. The tap root of our life is pride is the tap root. That is to make us living disobedient to God. That's why God is coming for cutting, cutting, cutting the root down so the tree withers and go into the fire. Hallelujah. And when we allow God to prove me, O oh God, prove me. Everything that is unfruitfulness in my life, prove me. I want to become fruitful. God loves you. 
You know, people think that oh, God knows what is now and um, that's what it does. I tell you, God loves you where you are. God is prepared to meet where you are. So there is no hierarchy, there is nothing there. You, God is prepared to meet you where you are. Only thing is God from me. God will take the action. This morning I just wanted to stand before the living God. God, any root, any root of bitterness, shall we stand before the living God? Focus on the Lord. All of us stand before.